ask you a question? Cause you kinda seem like you've been through a lot. I'm just kinda curious what happened to your eye. And why you have a metal arm brace cannon thing. And what could possibly be the most stylish birthmark ever. Well you see, I lost my arm and my eye during the eclipse. Well you know you're not supposed to stare at the sun when an eclipse is happening. Still doesn't quite explain the arm thing though. Well during the eclipse we were attacked by a bunch of demons and I lost all my friends. My eye, my arm, and after all that, got to watch my so-called best friend turn into a demon, sexually assault the woman of my life. And give you this sweet sword. Please put down my sword. Okay, I'm sorry. But hey, it could be worse. How could it possibly get any worse? No, nah, I don't know. I'll just give it to the count of three, two, <laughs> one. This is really the worst thing I've ever heard. What kind of cruel beast could ever do that to someone? I mean, is there any way to shut him up? Nah, you just kind of get used to it after a while. Hey Rangers, welcome to Super Report Reviews. My name's Steve. My name's Ernest. And today we'll be going over the Max Factory Berserk Guts, the Black Swordsman Repaint Edition. Is that enough words for you? That was a mouthful. <laughs> it's I not... Thought, I thought we were going over a guy who just has a carpet for, our, for a cape. <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. It's one of those, like, it doesn't bug me as much now, but still, we'll get into it in a second. Uh, if you guys haven't seen Berserk, I enjoy the anime a lot. It's super violent. There's a lot of bad things that happen all the time in the anime, especially to our main protagonist here. Did that explain his hand down there, Steve? Uh, yeah, if you watch the, um, well, it's the Golden Age Saga. Is when he loses his arm. I'm not going to get into it if you haven't seen it, but it's violent. It's oh no! I thought you just broke his robot hand. That's why it's like twisted like that. Oh no! That's like his little. He has a cannon. Oh, that's neat. yeah. You're like his hand. He has the cannon. Thing yeah, his hand it. shoots down, and then you can fire a cannonball out of it. Yeah, no, it's super cool. Like I, just, I had this set up for photos. You'll see this way. Reason why it's set up like this. At the very end of the video, I had him with a bunch of McFarlane dragon stuff that I just kind of have laying around up in my bedroom. That should be in trash, but, you know, go ahead. You shut your mouth. They're Jessica's. They I, deserve to be. Trash. Actually, half of them are mine. Okay, so the half is worth keeping. <laughs> I'll give you that one because I feel like my half is the better ones because I got all, like, the fire ones. So I have, like, the cool dragon, like, coming out of the lava and the Ghost Rider dragon. I have a skeleton <laughs> dragon with flaming with flaming wings. It's awesome. When you say Ghost Rider, all I can think of is Nicolas Cage laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first one's okay. Second one's better. Oh, man. While he's riding on a bike. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. The second movie, like, getting to the little rant. Like, the first one, I like the plot, and the acting's not as bad. But it's a boring-ass movie. Yeah. It's, it's boring as heck. For a ghost rider. <laughs> yeah, and just like the and the animation could be better. Second movie, flip-flop. Animation is actually pretty good in that one. And it's very action-packed, which I really enjoyed. Acting is abysmal in that movie. Nicholas including Cage. Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage was like, well, I don't care, so let's do this. <laughs> let's go for that payday for this character I supposedly like so much. And then, yeah. It's just like, you don't care about anything that's going on. But it looks cool, so we'll go with that. But anyways, you guys are here for the action figure. So without further ado, for his packaging. as Because as you can see, I had him out for photos, so he's already open. But you would be able to see him inside of the little plastic window there. Uh, you got your Max Factory, Berserk right there, Figma Action Figure Series 359. Bunch of some more stuff I can't understand. But on the side of the package, you get him with his sword over top of his shoulder. Opposite side, just him kind of looking a little bit menacingly. Top of the package, you get him with his cannon arm. And on the back, you just get him in some dynamic poses. Shows you all the stuff that he comes with. Bunch of stuff I can't understand. Some legal mumbo jumbo and more cannon arm on the bottom. You know, that would be it. If I lose my hand, it would definitely get turned into a cannon arm. You know what, chainsaw arm? No, a cannon arm just seems more practical. How's it going? Just like Pirates of Caribbean shoot out a big ball. You know what? I'll give you that one. I'm like, chainsaw would be cooler. But God, can you imagine like having that thing tied to your arm the entire time and having to move your arm with that thing attached to it? Oh, that would suck. But all right, let's just get into the figure. 
since he's already out of his cardboard prison. All right, so first and foremost, we're going to start with my least favorite accessory, and then we'll just kind of move on from there. Because Wait, I'll... wait, wait. Shouldn't you go with the best so you can be like, well, you know, these are the good things, I guess. No, nah, I like starting on a low point, and then we'll work our way up. You're a monster. Well, because, like, for instance, because you want to see all the details on the guy, I kind of have to take it off eventually. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to start there, and then we'll work our way around. Plus, it kind of hinders the articulation a bit. But we're going to go over his cape. Looks horrible. I'm just going to say it. Because initially, even when I got it out of the package, it was actually very clean looking. And I actually literally just like scrunched the crap out of this thing in order to kind of make it look a little bit more... Like a cape? Yeah, like how it should be. Because it should look very worn out. And I kind of wish they would just gave us a plastic option like they do with some of the other figures. I like I would even, like if they made the figure a little bit more money. And what it came with a plastic, like, hard cape. That would have been sweet. Because the top section here is actually made out of plastic. And you got a lot of blacks and some pretty decent detailing there. But once it kind of comes to the cape, it's just odd. Eh. Or at least, like, maybe add a little bit more paint detail just to give it a little bit more weathering look. Because for me, it just, it looks too clean. And I think that's my biggest problem. Also, there's a hole on the top here for where you can stick the handle of the sword out of there. Which you'll have to take the top off of the sword. But that just sticks right through. And you would pop this guy back on. Good to go. But yeah, I just kind of wish they maybe would have went with something different. But I kind of understand why it's like this. Because for a Figma, this is actually a fairly inexpensive figure. It, for how big he is, too, because he ran me uh, slightly over 40 bucks. I don't know, man. It's not. It's hideous. I'll just say it plain out. It's hideous. Yeah, like, I'm probably going to still pose it with him, to be honest. Really? But re here, real quick, <laughs> grab me my um, Lord, I think it's Saladin from Destiny. Because oh his cape is more or less the same as what's going on here. Just grab in Mr. Big Boy here. His cape is mostly the same, well... It's a slightly different material, like it's a little thicker. But you'll see here, like on the bottom, the frays actually look pretty good. Well, and this guy... Looks like some kid did it with scissors, man. I, yeah, I kind of agree. That, and you can see like on the top here, it's painted a little bit. Gives it a nice weathering. Under section, a little bit cleaner. Gives it a little bit of a different color. And I think, like, something like this would have been more what I want to see on this figure. And the sad thing is, this guy is actually cheaper and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, if it's, even if they were going to go with the cape, I I'd go with this kind of material, then I don't understand why you'd really have the plastic on top. Like, just kind of same alum this figure here. But then again, I also kind of wish this part was cloth on him since they went with cloth there so if you went some you lose some so for me again the easily the weakest accessory on this guy is his cape now if you want to take it off slash remove it you just do this backwards but for the head you're going to want to remove it now mine the neck pops up a lot easier than the head usually does that and you really want that joint to go with the head because the other head also comes with an extra neck joint so, yeah, we got to pop that guy out real quick. That looks disturbing, Steve. Only a little. Ugh, there we go. Well, actually, I didn't really need to do that now that I think about it because I got to show you guys the face sculpt anyways. So I was going to leave it a little bit higher. But that's just how you would pop the cape on. You just kind of do that backwards. And then you guys can see that. One of the cool things about this guy, because I'm going to go into the sword next, is he actually has a chain for the holster. It looks way better like this, Steve. Don't put the cape back on. <laughs> well, it's just like, that's the Black Swordsman, right? You can have the cool flowing cape to go along with them. You're doing justice to the figure if you leave it off. <laughs> <laughs> Again, one option. And on the front here, it transitions the plastic once you get to the band with the throwing knives here. But what you're supposed to do with his giant iron sword, that and I got to put the little cap back on. This is also how you're going to get it onto his hand. But for the sword, it's a gunmetal color with some very dark grays here, lighter grays towards the blade. It's got a little bit of nicks in the paint, but that kind of actually helps to show it a little bit more weathering because 
He abuses the crap out of the sword in the series. No, he don't. He never even uses that. Oh, my God. No, never. <laughs> Doesn't wield the same with one hand. But, yeah. Blade looks pretty cool. Uh, maybe we'd like to see maybe a little bit more nicks in the blade. Just because, again, like, especially, like, early on guts. Like, this thing was just, like, banging the all heck. And you got a little metal clip right here on the side of the sword. The handle is done in a cloth with a, well, cloth appearance with the paint job with it wrapping around. And then just a little bit of black here for the handle. And what you're supposed to do when attaching it to him, all this does is you just eh, you slide this into the little holster here. And then the ring here hooks to this little plastic piece right here. And you just kind of slide it over top. And that's it. Has a little bit of wiggle, but it gives it a little bit more of like an authentic feel to it with that attached like that. It looks better that way. I do like it a lot. Looks really cool. It's, a, it's actually, it's a really neat idea to go along with them. Tell you what, Steve, his hand's going to disturb me for this whole review. It, it's, it'll it's come off. Broken. Okay, for his next hand, he comes with a hand for the can accessory, which overall looks pretty cool. Uh, I don't really know a way to make it look a little bit deeper for the cannon barrel. But I do like this accessory a lot Easy. on it. You take a needle and you heat it up and you just poke it in there. The only thing I don't like is wait, the... Wait, 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 wait. That's how it comes off? Yeah, just boop. Oh. The peg for this is super tiny. Super tiny, which is kind of the same for his hand here. Because his hand's kind of done old Figma style where it's you sure a hinge. You like Steve? No, this is legit. <laughs> I don't know about that. But it's on a hinge, and then you can rotate it, but pulling it off, really tiny peg. Which, the only thing that has me concerned about that is, with the weight of the sword, it could apply a lot of pressure on the peg there. And it kind of worries me over time with this thing snapping, especially if you didn't have the hand in all the way, or it stuck out a little bit anyways. And then you having the sword on there, applying weight to the peg. I could see some bad things happening, so I kind of wish... They would have maybe gone with a little bit of a thicker peg there, just mainly because of how big some of his accessories are. But for his hand accessories, a pair of clenched fists, a pair of open palm hands for gripping arms, slapping people, holding swords, I guess. Well, Does he have a different face? He does have a different face. Why are we on his We're happy face? Kind of. He doesn't, he doesn't smile. I'm pretty sure that's close to we'll ever get smiling. But. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We'll get to that in a second. He has straight angle gripping hands for when you want the sword to be in a more straight upright position. Which actually how you get the sword into his hands, the easiest way I do it is you pull the pig off the bottom. And you just kind of slide it into his hand. Gotta be careful though, you don't want to screw up with the peg there. But once you get it on, you just... Put the butt of the sword back on. Not sure what they actually call that piece. And that's pretty much it. Holds on to it pretty good. But again, with the weight, <laughs> it's not very friendly with the joints. Uh, but he can also hold it with both hands too, which is actually pretty sweet. So you don't actually really need to rely on using the open hand to kind of cup it. He can actually grip onto it. <laughs> like so. <laughs> Whoops. You killed him, Steve. <laughs> Finally killed Guts. Griffith should thank me. Slightly angled hands. Oh, yeah, I gotta put this head back on. Uh, right there. Slightly angled hands for when you want the sword to be a little bit more angled in his hands. Like so. Uh, I noticed with these ones, the peg seems to be a little bit looser on that guy. So you have to have it kind of at a straight angle, at least for mine to work a little bit more appropriately because as you can see on the side he kind of just flops oh, a little God. bit that looks amazing super de duper amazing and yeah just uh how you swap out the hands real quick you're just going to go straight out from the forearm grip as close to that little peg as possible because again you don't want to apply really any pressure sideways with that because i really don't want to worry about snapping it so just pull it out grab a different hand and you want to go push Straight into the forearm. Pretty simple to do. And then for his faces, he comes with a super angry expression. 
But you can see he has his one closed eye because he loses his eye during the Golden Age saga. And then... I thought it was during Frieza saga. Could have been wrong. Cell saga. God, no. Working with amateurs around here, I swear. Uh, but you can see he has his gritting teeth. Eyes are painted very nicely. And overall, it just actually has a really nice paint job for the face. Like, even has a little bit of a cut on the top section of his nose. The hair spiked very nicely. Uh, there's a little bit of color difference, it looks like, on the top section right there. Well, that's pretty much about it for that. And then for his face that he comes with out of the packaging, mostly the same details, but you'll just notice he has a little bit more of, like, a plain, emotionless expression. Ah, that's normal for him. That, that's completely fine. Right <laughs> a little bit of a frowny face. But, yeah, works pretty good. I'm still debating on which one I'm going to have posing on my shelf. Probably gonna go up angry face, but Why? I do, I do like this one. I kind of wish he had like an uh, more like open mouth, kind of like roaring look. What do you want him to roar at? I don't know, just yelling. He yells at everything, everything. He's like roar, roar at me, big boy. <laughs> Scream at me like one of your devil women. <laughs> Then he also comes with your standard Figma stand, which pegs into the peg hole on the back here, right behind his sword holder chain thingy, which that just goes straight into his back. Might have to wiggle it a little bit. Also, be careful, because uh, that is, on most of these kind of figures, it's very stiff the first time you go in there. <laughs> wow. But uh, applying a little bit of heat is a good way to uh, solve that problem. And then this also comes with a little accessory to go on top. So it gives you a little bit more of an angle when you're pegging in there. And then this black one. Makes no sense. Yeah, we haven't figured out really like a good reason. Like what? why would you use this? Because it's very straight, small peg. And it doesn't give you instructions on the back of the figure. And I refuse to look up somebody else's review right now. But that just, like, slides over top of that. And if you want to go straight into his back, his pouches back here are going to be in the way. So you more or less have to peg that in and have him at an angle, which it gives him a pretty sturdy little handle in order to do that. But the stand just kind of does that by itself, so I don't really know why this is really necessary. Like, it might be maybe for something else. Like, if somebody else has an accessory that works really good with it. For right now, I just... I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below if you know a little bit more about it than I do. Everyone knows more than you do, Steve. That's true. And also the Figma bag. Best accessory ever. Yeah. How else are you going to hold your stuff without keeping the box around? Ziploc bags. Super useful. Glad they always come with these things. And then we'll go over the rest of his details. Uh, we already gone over his head sculpt. But one thing I want to bring up is on the back of his neck, he has his brand. And my only issue is it's the same color as his skin. And I really think that they should add a little bit more paint detail in that region there, like maybe add some red or some blacks, just so it stands out a little bit better. Or even like, especially with the red, to give it that more bloody expression, like whenever one of those demons shows up, it starts to bleed. So it'd be really cool if it maybe conveyed on the figure a little bit better. Cause that just kind of blends in with the skin. Yeah. It looks more like a copyright than anything. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they were worried somebody was going to steal him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but for the rest of them, he has his traditional armor done in a dark gunmetal color with uh, some armor plating on the top section there. A little bit of rivets. Why is he so jacked? Have you seen the sword he has to wield? Well, yeah, I mean, now, like, okay, move your finger. Okay, I see, like, he has really huge muscles on top and such a weak muscles on the bottom. Well, you don't need leg day to hold a sword, <laughs> you know? Uh, the only thing I don't like, moving on to his arm, like, he has a lot of detail on there. Really nice, darker skin tone coloring. Got some veins popping out literally everywhere. Muscles on muscles. And then you got that hideous elbow joint there <laughs> that shows up a little too well, in my opinion. Can't do people's elbow with that. Especially when you bend it. It also shows up pretty well. And 
I don't know. Like, I feel like... Can it's... you take it off from there? Well, it does come off. But, see? It's pretty easy to remove. But you can't really, like, hide it at all. Well, on this side, it hides a little bit better. The armor. Yeah, you know, with the arm here. Like, it's not nearly as noticeable as that. Even though it's mostly, like, the same kind of joints. But, like, this just hides back here a little better. So, it's just... I don't know, it works more conveniently. And I think maybe if they would have removed some of the plastic here and expanded on the forearm a little bit more, I think it maybe would have maybe helped the, that appearance a little bit better. Uh, but you have all his throwing knives on the front section of his belt here. Got an extra knife here on his utility belt on the bottom here. Got some straps here on the armor to hold it together. Looks pretty good. You also got a little bit of a rust color over top of the gum metal to give it a little bit more of a weathered look to it. Then for the rest of his belt, done in a brown leather color. Got a little bit of a copper color here for some of the locks and the buckle there on the side. His pants, done in a kind of like a flat black color. Lots of very nice wrinkling on the top section here. See a little bit of the muscle definition kind of showing through. Uh, giant joints on the back, but not so bad there. Even when you bend them, blends in pretty nicely. It's just like that one arm just kind of bugs me. You know? I also like, too, that he has like this little jock strap thing going on. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't going to point it out. With, his, with his utility belt. Well, yeah. Got to keep it in. Got to keep the boys protected. <laughs> I don't know about that. It just It does look disturbing, though. That's for sure. <laughs> A little bit. And then you have his pirate boots on the bottom. Also forgot to mention for his hand, done in a cloth wrap on the side there. And for his metal cannon arm, looks pretty cool. Very Army of Darkness-esque. Well, technically, I guess this... I think this is before Army of Darkness. I'll have to look that up. Or just let me know in the comment section below. Then I don't have to look it up. It works out great that sounds way. Sounds like a lazy way out, Steve. Yeah, that sounds about right. The only thing is, is like his hand doesn't quite match the same coloring as his arm, where you have the same weathering as the armor. And then his hand's kind of like a clean, almost blue color. It's a very like dark, dark black blue. And it's pretty much the same for each of the hands. So they stand out a little bit more when next to the forearm here, which is a little bit sad. And then you got some more cloth color here for the connection point to his forearm. And then for his articulation, is that good look? Up about that far, down about that far, a little bit side to side, a little bit of a rotation. Arm can go up about that far, down about yeah, that far. The armor really gets in the way, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, can rotate all the way around. A little bit of rotation back and forth. Actually, a pretty decent rotation. Then you can kind of... Does those pieces come off for the armor or? No, they're on there. But they're a little bit softer, so they're a little bit more flexible. So they're not a huge hindrance, but a little bit. Then for his forearm, can bend in about that far, straighten up about that far. Hands can rotate all the way around on the hinge joint so they can move back and forth. For his chest, can rotate not much to the side because the knife gets in the way there. And there's, if you work it, you can get it to rotate a little better. Ugh, I wouldn't mess with that. No. But yeah, I don't really want to yank on that. So for the most part, that's about as good as it's getting. Not much of a forward and back either. Sadly. Being a Figma, he does not have a lot of uh, well, the patience with him. Well, the thing is, he's got so much on him that he's not quite the best, especially at the hips. For his legs, though, can go outwards about that far. Ouch. Inwards about that far. Can do a forward kick about that far. Back kick about that far. Nice bend at the knee. Rotation at the knee. Rotation at the top part of the thigh as well. Feet can go a little bit side to side. Can wiggle and go forward and back. All right, so for some quick comparisons here, we have him with some other Figma action figures with Ryuko Motoi from Kill la Kill and Mami Tomoe from Puella Magi Madoka Magica. Garbage. You're garbage. Awesome anime. Garbage. Awesome figure. Nah, that figure's not bad. TV show's garbage. Oh. Wish they, I wish they had a better stand for her, but still, it's not bad. 
That's like one of the most elaborate stands I've gotten with a Figma. It holds up to six of her guns. It looks like a piece of cardboard, Steve. It is a piece of cardboard, but it still holds six of the guns. Exactly. <laughs> still better than what we got. It still has the Figma stand on it. And here's some more Figma figures with Roger Smith from Big O and Guyver 2 female version from the OVA. It's the greatest Guyver. It's true, because it has... Tatas. Yes. And here's some SH Figure Arts figures with the Sailor Moon Crystal version and Kamen Rider Black. Steve, RX. I thought you were supposed to compare them to good stuff. Why is there big, uh, big bad Beetleborgs in there? And here is some fiery redheads for my collection because he's burning inside, I imagine. But we have the Demoto Bene Mia from Monster Musume and the Sega Asuka Lingli Suyu. Uh, the Nerve Cafe version. Should have just swam with Mia because he hunts monsters, get it? True. Darling Coon's got to save her. And here they are with some stateside anime figures with the Bandai Dragon Ball Dragon... Oh, I just forgot what Dragon it was. Dragon Stars. Dragon Stars. <laughs> Series Frieza Final Form and Super Saiyan Vegeta. So overall, the Figma Guts, um, for 40 bucks, I'm not going to complain. You can't beat the $40. <laughs> It's just plain and simple. You to, to be honest, like for a repaint, like I actually think they did a really great job on his paint job. The brand could have maybe used something, but overall, everything else is really fantastic about this figure. It's just the cape, which I get. It keeps the price down. I understand. Could have maybe been done a little bit differently. Would have made me happy. But for the price. Thank God they're not in business of pleasing Steve's. God, they should be. <laughs> everyone should please me not in that way oh god <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so for the price point that he's at i i definitely recommend picking him up especially if you're a big fan of the berserk series he's a really solid figure my now, my issue i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off is my issue is his uh like his movements the armor hinders it a lot like everywhere on his body yeah but like buying this kind of figure like you expect it though like, it's not anything that's, like, uh, like it jumped out at me, like, oh, my God, this figure's articulation's not quite as great as some of the other figures. Like, look at all that crap that's attached to him. There's going to be some hindrance. Yeah, but, well, you wouldn't go in too many crazy po uh, poses with him anyway, so. Yeah, you pretty much just want to holding the sword and just slashing on things, and he does that well. As you can see with the photos for this little gallery. Except the uh, arm joints are... Scary. The hand joints are the only thing that are, like, the thing that's legitly sketchy about this figure. They should have been a little bigger. Uh, but, again, for the $40 price point, it, it pretty much is an SH Figure Arts price at that point with a little bit more stuff. And for an import figure, that's pretty darn good. Uh, for recent Figma purchases, where would you rank this guy? Because we've gotten the Ray, the Rem and Ram. Not Ray, Rem and Ram. Uh, hentai common. There's the Guyvers. That's hard. I'm gonna say I like him better than uh, Guyver three, because nothing really like stands out that's like falling off on this guy. Yeah, there's nothing that falls off him, which is like the oh my god, <laughs> for how much stuff he has on him, nothing is falling off of him. I still think hentai common is better, just because like that guy's a super posable and stuff, and detail wise, just as good. As much too hard as I don't know, Steve. They both got penis jocks. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> God dang it! Uh, Rem and Ram are good. Rem especially, like this, like he's way better than Ram. Ram probably about the same. Yeah, because in terms of what they come with and what they do. But she had a potato, Steve. I'll never get over that. King potato, and also more expensive than he was. <laughs> it's true by like twenty dollars. God. So yeah, just if you like Figma figures and Berserk, go buy this guy. Also, real quick for you guys that made it to the end of this video, just want to bring up real quick that we still have a giveaway going on till the end of January 22nd for the Alien United States Colonial Marines accessory pack from NECA. So if you guys would like to participate in the contest, just follow the link in the description below. Uh, all you gotta do is just sign up for Gemmer and join the Aliens Club, and that's it. So definitely follow the link in the description if you guys want to be up for possibly getting an awesome alien figure that we also reviewed, so there'll be that too. Uh, 
So yeah, definitely go uh, sign up for it. But what do you guys think? If you guys picked up the Figma Berserk, what's your favorite Berserk collectible? Is Devil Man just more your thing? Please let us know in the comments. We'll post a picture of this guy on our Facebook account if you want to click the link in the description below. We also have a Patreon account with exclusive prints for the channel, also in the description. And help us defeat those characters by hitting that like button, subscribe, become a ranger today. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.